Good day, everyone. In light of the increased interest in the topic of Earth's magnetic reversal and Earth's vulnerability to a solar-induced global blackout, I'd like to address four of the most asked questions that we've been getting. So our basic points are these. Let's review. The sun's outbursts are extremely weak these days, and yet the resulting impacts at Earth are producing technological disruptions like we'd expect from solar activity that is a hundred times stronger. The Earth's defense against the sun, the magnetic field, is weakening as part of a polar reversal, and this is likely a contributing factor to Earth's enhanced vulnerability, if not the driving factor. Given the changes on the sun and the Earth, it is natural to ask the question, is the sun's weakening tied to Earth's weakening magnetic field. As nice and neat and tidy as that would be, reality is more complex. The Earth's magnetic field reversals, along with lesser excursions and wander events, are absolutely on a cycle, one that has repeated on Earth for millions of years. The big events like this one don't happen very often. At most, they happen once every few thousand to tens of thousands of years, and as long as hundreds of thousands of years could separate these events. The sun is a different animal. This is Usoskin's reconstruction of solar activity for the last 11,000 years. And while the sun doesn't go as high or dip as low as some oscillations over time, the distance between the little bumps is always about the same. You don't see any big plateaus in the fine data. Even when the sun stays relatively steady for hundreds of years, the 200 and 400 year greater oscillations are quite prevalent. Many prominent scientists have already been discussing the impending trend downward in solar activity, and it appears to be happening already, despite how much of an effect the sun is able to have on our technology. The weakening of Earth's magnetic field began as we trended upward there at the bottom right, and is continuing to accelerate now that the sun is coming back down. The two cycles are simply unrelated, and it is merely a cosmic coincidence that we appear to be enduring both changes simultaneously. Many folks are asking how we track this now and what are the experts saying? Well, the experts aren't saying much. In fact, since the mission manager of Swarm said the Earth's protection had begun weakening at 5% per decade compared to the previous 5% per century, there has been a virtual shutdown of all official information and communication on the topic. I can't tell you how many folks from organizations like the FAA or NASA or the NWS have emailed me on their personal accounts about the changes we're seeing. I can't tell you because I stopped counting about a month after our first review of the current state of Earth and Sun. That was back in Pittsburgh in October at Observing the Frontier. They generally don't feel safe talking about this at work or even outside of work with anyone whom they have a shred of fear would lose respect for them for bringing up this topic. I'm never going to out those people, but for all of you listening, know that almost all of them are okay with you knowing there are people watching this everywhere, even if they're still working up the courage to do anything about it. As for how we track this now, all we can really do is watch how the sun behaves and track its effects at Earth. We can gauge the relative size of the solar storms and measure the resulting damage compared to what we should be expecting. Until the officials give us something more, that's really all we can do. A lot of folks have asked if it is safe to fly. Given the fact that puny solar impacts took down air travel in major regions three times in five months, the question is not really unfounded. It is encouraging, however, that even when the controllers, quote, just saw static, they were able to get all the planes back down safely, and as you all probably know, we did not have any planes falling out of the sky recently. However, I assure you there will be no air travel during the worst of a magnetic reversal, so the question becomes, at what point do we cross that line? Neither I nor anyone else in the world has that answer for you. It could be years, it could be decades, it could be tomorrow. The greater risk is really from space radiation. Our foundational examination of this topic came when the U.S. government reported that during the government blackout a few years ago, the shutdown, a few flights that would normally have been rerouted from the polar area due to incoming solar particles were not because we lacked the running infrastructure and instrumentation during that shutdown. The implications for what happens during serious solar events, especially as our magnetic field weakens, is no small matter. 
The data suggests that during major solar events, we could have thousands of people exposed to cancer-causing levels of radiation, and with Earth's weakening magnetic field, one can only speculate as to how those statistics might be affected. By far, the most asked question we get is, when is this all going to happen? When's it going to get really bad? As I mentioned, nobody knows when we're going to cross that line. The point of technological catastrophe is different than the lowest doldrums of the magnetic event, and the end of the danger zone is another date still after that. If any deities are in the audience and can provide counsel on timing, that would be appreciated, but otherwise, nobody can tell you the day. However, we can see it's happening already. The when is now, ongoing, progressing, exacerbating, and as much as humanly possible, we will keep tracking the sun, the earth, and everything involved in their relationship.